For a while now I've been curious about a lithium titanate battery. Now the purpose of this cell that I build in this video is to actually run my furnace battery backup. I'm looking for a solution that offers a longer longevity on the battery overall. Now lithium titanate claim the battery life is anywhere between 20,000 and 30,000 cycles whereas a lead acid is somewhere around the neighborhood of 500 cycles. So if I can get something to work out better there, I also think that the energy density of the lithium cells is higher so hopefully I can get more energy into a smaller space and that's really the end goal here. So if I get something I don't ever have to replace and something that's going to hold a little more energy I think it's a win. To begin building this cell I ordered up six of these from battery something now. Stand by while I find out where I got the batteries. I got these batteries from batteryhookup.com. If you do decide to get some batteries from there as well, uh, be sure to use the coupon code HOUSEDADLIFE and it'll get you 5% off. Plus it gives me a kickback for producing these kind of videos. The weight of one of these batteries is exactly 520 grams. So 520 times six gives us a total of 3,120 grams, otherwise known as 3.12 kilos or 6.93 pounds. So it's a pretty nice little light pack. It should be 120 amps total in those six cells. So after ordering six cells from there, I also picked up some flat bar, which I'm gonna cut and uh, make about the width of the battery and drill a couple of holes into them. And that's gonna be what my contactor is between the two batteries. The dimension of this finished battery is gonna be about five and one eighth wide by four and a half inches. So they're pretty compact cells. And you have to love how awesome my wife is, honestly. I mean, how many of your wives are going to let you cut up flat bar inside the house? Uh, it's just a laminated floor, but I mean, mad respect to the wife for putting up with me making YouTube videos wherever in the house. I made these bars the same width as the battery, and that is going to prove to be a fail later on when I realize what I've done. I found a drill bit that's uh, very much the same size as the post on the battery and then what I did is I used a punch to kind of get my bit started. I drilled them about two sizes bigger than what they need to be and that's just so I have a little bit of play sideways so I can fit these things exactly where they need to go. The drilling and the cutting did mess up these things so I took a file down and just got all the burrs and the rough edges or the sharp edges off. The thread on these batteries is 8 by 32 or number 8. And then what I'm gonna do is just pop the pieces on the top here and here you can see my first fail and shortly I'll realize I'm an idiot. <laughs> and there it is. Now what I should have done is cut these things a little bit narrower so the two will never touch because that is a direct short of the cell two and three in that series and that's gonna create a serious problem. So I did cut all of the flat bars shorter so that this is no longer an issue but they're not as pretty. Once they're all cut shorter, you can see them on top here and that's gonna be a much better fit and there's no risk of anything shorting out, so that's a win. Now, a lot of people say you do not need a BMS for this and uh, I don't know, anytime I put cells together in series, I always feel like I should have some kind of a balanced thing going on. So, it's the Helltech BMS I got on AliExpress for a couple of bucks, I think they were five or six bucks. Came with a wiring harness and the BMS there. Now because this is lithium titanate, I'm going to have to take the two solder points there, disconnect those, and then solder the uh, first two points there. And uh, if you're curious as to how these things are hooked up, all the instructions are on the website, which are actually printed on the circuit board, which is kind of nice. Desoldering this was a piece of cake. I just heated them up and they disconnected right away. And I tried to uh, show you guys, and I'll, I'll do my best here to take and video this, but I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. It's a little bit further off but you can see soldering the two points, piece of cake, that's done. And now we're set up for lithium titanate. All of the battery voltages showed up pretty close with the exception of one cell. 2.29 for the first one, 2.3 for the second one, 2.29, 2.33, so that one's a little higher. 2.329, and you'll have to excuse my focus there, 2.31 for the last cell. So they're all pretty close. I'll go ahead and arrange all these batteries in the proper sequence here to make a nice serial battery pack. And it's time to connect up the BMS. According to the website, the first negative goes to the first negative in your series. And then after we connect these all up, the first positive goes into the first positive of that, of that same cell. And then the rest or the remaining of the wires just connect to the positives as you get further along in your series. Every cell will get one positive wire. 
Once the pack is totally put together, the total voltage is 13.84, so that battery pack is not yet charged, so we will have to charge these things up. The top voltage of these cells is 2.8 volts per cell, and the lower limit is 1.5. To be safe, I'm not going to take them any lower than 1.7 when I do test this thing out. Once the cable is plugged in, I actually didn't know it had a little run light to indicate it is working, but the uh, that's kind of a nice little bonus feature. I was intending to just hook this thing up and then monitor it with a voltmeter just to make sure it was actually doing something. I'll tighten up all the connections and I'm just very lightly tightening this. I actually didn't need a ratchet, I could have just used the hand tool. But the existence coordinator is helping me and she gave me some overkill so let's take what you can get when somebody's helping you out all right once this whole puppy is hooked up i uh, turned on the battery charger and i'm just using a car charger here and it's drawing about nine amps across the batteries and there you can see it's hooked up now something that surprised me when i charged this thing up is uh, this is definitely not something you can do without you definitely shouldn't be charging batteries like this unless you're monitoring it and even then I don't know if this is the right thing to do or not so word of caution if you're doing anything that I'm doing here it's probably all wrong this is just my what I have on hand this is what I'm testing with setup uh, this 12 volt battery charger doesn't take it I, I kind of figured it would take it to about 14 and a half volts and it would slowly take and taper off the voltage it did not do that it would have taken and run these cells way past. I was watching it and one of the cells did get up to up 2.87 volts or something like that. It was past 2.8. So it's definitely not cutting off when it should. But that's probably because this is a lead acid battery charger, not a lithium titanate charger. It did the trick, but I don't know if this is the right way to do it. Disclaimer. Once I did have this thing totally set up, I let the balancer run on it overnight and the next morning I actually used a much better power supply, which is a much safer and this would be a good way to charge up this battery. I set the voltage to 16.8 and I let the amperage go to max and this thing is only capable of 5 amps anyway, which is well within the limits of what these batteries can take. Once the draw became really low, you can see it here 0.1 two nine amps or 2.1 watts this is when i decided this battery is about as full as it can be and i'll disconnect it and it's time to hook it up and test to see what actual life we get out of these cells and to make sure the voltages are all right as well i will test them across we have a total of 16.61 volts on this battery pack before i start the test and i will check a couple of the cells just to make sure that they're balanced as well 2.779, 2.763, Now when I did test these voltages uh, this morning after the charger was off of it, it did balance out to a very, very tight parameter. They were within a couple of points. Okay, so it's time to test this thing up. I do have a furnace battery backup in my house, so that's what I'm gonna be using to test the cell. It draws anywhere up to 500 watts or 500 and change. It already has a D-Rock battery monitor hooked up so I can exactly monitor what the life cycle is of this battery here you can see the hookup nothing fancy the positive goes to the inside of my inverter and the negative side goes through the shunt connects up to the d-rock and I did leave the BMS connected as well in fact as I'm filming this portion of the video right now it's still running back there I don't know if you can hear the furnace running also what's really cool about these cells that I did not know until I put the battery connections on those battery cables are designed to be working with these batteries, or it sure looks like they are. They, they sure fit on really nice, as you can see here. The meter is zeroed out for this test, and uh, now there's nothing left to do but sit back and wait and see what we get. I'll go flip the breaker, and we can see that the consumption is now changed to battery. This is about an hour and change later. I'm just going to check up on the batteries. Everything is cool to the touch. We've used 140 watt hours of energy and it's currently running drawing 310 watts of power. And there we go, the results are in. 284 watt hours of total battery life available. Now although this won't be enough to power my furnace for any length of time, it's going to end up being a great battery for my K-Weld spot welder, which takes an absolute ton of current and those batteries are very favorable for it. If you do like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe so you can see more of it when it comes out. If you want to learn more about this device, I will leave a link on the side and you can check that out as well.